This guy's riding on a camel and he's talking on a cell phone. That's just the best. Riding a camel, talking on a cell phone. Good morning from Giza, Egypt. <laughs> yeah, like, we are. This is our first time in Africa and our first time in Egypt. Uh, yeah, and uh, I was hoping we'd open the curtains this morning and the we see pyramids, but no, we see another hotel. So that's Which is okay. <laughs> that's fine. So we uh, flew into Cairo last night and very late. It's a long story. We'll tell you about it when we do like a wrap up or something, but... Um, we got in very late. It was about quarter after one in the morning before we actually got to sleep. Um, we were in a lovely hotel. It's called the Steigenberger uh, Pyramids Hotel in Giza. Now, one thing we learned is that Giza is the modern name for Goshen that you hear about in the Old Testament, which I thought was yeah, really Yeah, I never, I really didn't know that. I so did that was very that. interesting. And as hilly as Israel is, uh, uh, Egypt appears to be very flat. Yes, and it's like very flat. Um, there are some hills and things, but but, yeah, it, but not no, like no it mountains is. where you're going up and down and up nothing and down like, like in, in Israel. In Israel no. yeah. At least not that we've seen so far. So yeah. we'll see in a little bit. Um, it continues to be cold. Uh, it's a tiny bit warmer here than it was in Israel. And it is sunny. And it is sunny. The sky is blue. It's really pretty. Um, but yeah, we're in Egypt. So today. We're going to the pyramids and to see my personal favorite, the Sphinx. And and then there's at least a photo op with camels, if not a ride on camels. Don't know about how that's gonna work. We'll um, see when we get there. And then tonight we get on a train to Luxor and it's an overnight sleeper train. It's um, quite a ways south. I didn't realize how far away uh, um, Luxor, Luxor is. actually is, but we're going on this train and so that will be a new experience uh, mm -hmm. for both of us. And so that's gonna be very interesting. They took our bags this morning. Uh, we will be leaving our main suitcase and taking just a, a go bag, overnight kind of bag that we have to have everything we need for two days. One other thing is they warned us very strongly, our tour director, as well as the tour guide, do not drink the water. Right. They said it's purified, but for for people from other countries, they recommend they yeah, just it drink comes from the Nile, water. and they they're used to it. But Westerners are not, so do not drink yeah. the water. So we're using bottled water for everything. They did give us two bottles of water in the room, which is really nice. And of course, we can buy more if we need to. Yeah. They use the Egyptian pound here, mm -hmm. so we'll get some of that because that'll be fun to add to his coin and mm -hmm. money collection. <laughs> but as well as being able to actually buy stuff here. They do take American dollars and it's about 15 to one. Yeah, so 15, 15 to 17 to one. 15 to 17 um, Egyptian pounds. Uh, pounds to $1. In any case, we are in Egypt. The sky is beautiful and it's gonna be a good day. So let's go. Well, our first stop is the Memphis World Heritage Site. And um, it's a museum and area where Ramses was. It was the capital of Egypt for a long time. Uh, 3000 BC to 1500 BC, from what I understand. So let's take a look. The Memphis World Heritage Site is located about 45 minutes south of Cairo. It is mostly an open air museum with many artifacts from around the area of Memphis. Some of the interesting pieces include this large statue of Ramses II, an 80 ton alabaster sphinx with, they think, the face of Queen Hatshepsut, and this 33-foot-tall statue of Ramses II inside the building on site. From what our guide told us, it was located in a number of pieces in the River Nile. I've included links in the description if you'd like to know more about this remarkable museum. The next stop was Saqqara Archaeological Site, home of the Steppe Pyramid. This pyramid was designed by an ancient Egyptian architect, Imhotep, for King Dozier around 2600 BC and is considered the oldest pyramid in the world. 
Initially, pyramids were built as a series of platforms, each slightly smaller than the last. Later, they learned how to fill them in, so to speak, into the more familiar form we see at the Great Pyramids in Giza. Now we get a visit to an oriental carpet school where um, this is where they make carpets and um, children are taught here too part of the day. So let's go see what we can find out. Our guide told us that it's common for entire families to work here. The children go to school in either the morning or the afternoon and then come here to learn the trade of carpet weaving with their parents. They get paid by the inch and so learn to be incredibly fast as you can see by the video. The kids were very cute and even though they didn't speak any English, they understood that we were amazed by their speed. It's important to point out that while hiring 10 year olds is illegal in the United States, the children we saw here were all with their parents, appeared happy and well nourished, and looked like they enjoyed the adulation of American tourists. Schools like this are fairly common in Egypt and it's a system that seems like it's a win-win for the economy and the families. It was a fun stop for me as I love all things fiber. We bought two small rugs, one of soft, soft Egyptian cotton and one of wool. And as you can see, Phoebe was quick to think that they were for her. Finally, it was time for the real reason we came to Egypt, the Great Pyramids of Giza. There are at least three ways to appreciate the pyramid. One is to stand near the bottom and photograph them. The second is to pay the additional $25 fee and go inside the pyramid, which is what Derek did. The third is to climb up on the pyramid, which is what I did. There are no handrails and it's pretty much at your own risk. The stones are uneven and the pyramid wasn't meant to be a staircase, so you have to be careful and you have to decide if it's something that you want to do. It was very windy, as you can hear, but the view was really cool and you know, I can now say I climbed up on the outside of one of the great pyramids of Egypt. Derek, however, opted to go inside the pyramid. I was pretty excited to be able to go inside the Great Pyramid. To start, you walk up some normal stairs that have a quarter turn spiral steps to them. One of the first things I noticed was it was hot, much hotter than outside, and it got hotter the further into the pyramid I went. After the steps, there was a long ramp, maybe four stories up, at a steep angle, and there were cleats on there so that you could walk up the ramp, and there were handrails on each side. The ceiling was only about four feet high, so I ducked down and started climbing with both hands on the railings. At the top, the ceiling suddenly became very high, maybe 30 or 40 feet high, and there was another ramp with cleats still at a steep angle, but you don't have to duck down. At the top, there was a four foot square hole about eight feet long that went into the burial chamber. So I ducked down again and went in. Currently, there is not much inside the burial chamber as the tomb was raided anciently. In fact, it only has the outermost stone sarcophagus and it is damaged. The sarcophagus is large enough that it seemed to me that it had to have been put in place when the pyramid was built, unless they have some service elevator they didn't show us. Once we were back together on level ground, we headed for the bus and a short trip to where Casanova and Alibaba awaited us. It was time for the camel rides. <laughs> For dear life with only one stirrup because the owner said camel saddles only ever have one stirrup was pretty much an interesting experience but seriously we had a blast the cost was twenty dollars each and was worth every egyptian pound the pics in front of the pyramids were a hoot and everyone had a ton of fun i pretty much laughed and hung on for dear life through the whole ride i think camels might now be my new favorite animal. <laughs> Well, 
Oh, that was pretty hilarious fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. My camel's name was Casanova. Mine was Alibaba. Alib Alibaba. And Casanova and Alibaba are good camels. They really were. I mean, they're yep. pretty, they really was kind of fun. Ahmed yep. was our guy. Uh, it was the guide and um, yeah, it was pretty funny. We took okay. some good pictures. We did, we did. Um, so um, right now we're headed to the Sphinx. And then I think from there we go to, not exactly the Orient Express. <laughs> it's but a little rustic is what they describe it. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how kind of rustic this train is, but we'll find out. In any case, it's the Sphinx is up next and Camel Ride was great. So, all right, we'll see you in a bit. We were then bused a short distance from the pyramids to a parking lot where we could sort of see the Sphinx, our final stop in the afternoon. There seemed to be restoration work going on around the Sphinx, so there were fences that kept people from getting too close, but we did get a few good shots of it. The Sphinx is thought to be between 4,000 and 5,000 years old. Its face is said to be a representation of the Pharaoh Khafre. It is 240 feet long, 66 feet high, and 62 feet wide. It is made of limestone. For more information on the Sphinx and the restoration work done over the years, I've put some links in the description. We arrived at the Cairo train station about an hour before our train was to arrive. By this time, we were all hungry and tired, and the station was crowded. Then the train was delayed another hour, so we were really tired and really hungry. I found out this sweet lady's name is Hannah. She was also waiting at the train station. She saw me practically sleep on my feet and smiled and slid over on the bench and patted the wood, inviting me to sit by her. I took the opportunity to rest for a few minutes and we had a little conversation with the help of her son because I didn't speak any Arabic and she didn't speak any English. But we laughed and hugged. Thank you, Hannah. Your kindness was so appreciated. When the train finally arrived, we boarded, found our tiny cabin and got settled. And it wasn't long before the cabin steward brought dinner. Well, we can truly say that we are doing an absolute first for us. Um, we are on the sleeper car train from Giza to Luxor. And it's an interesting experience. Yes, it is. It is very interesting. Let's start out with um, what we have for dinner because they brought dinner to our little car. First of all, there's the door. I don't know what that is. But that's a little place oh, where you can hang things. Tiny closet. There's a sink with a mirror and a light. That's the only place we have a light right there. There are two bathrooms down the hallway outside. Then um, there's a bunk up there. And there's a bunk. There's two, a couch there's thing that, that will down. turn into a bunk. And then this is dinner. There's rice there and some vegetables and some meat that I don't know what it is. Chicken, I think, and some kind of sauce and some bread and a cookie or something. So, <laughs> but you know what? We're so tired. We're just going to eat it. And then we're, the guy's going to come in. He fixes the bottom bunk and then we're just going to go to sleep and we'll wake up in Luxor tomorrow, we hope. It's been a long day. So anyway, we'll let you know how it goes in the morning, whether they whistle every time they go into a town or I have no idea what they do, but we'll find out. We'll find out. So. And find out we did. It was, <laughs> it was it, interesting. It was really interesting. So, but we'll tell you how all that went. And we'll also show you Luxor, the Karnak Temple Complex, the Valley of the Kings, and the Cairo Museum. You bet. All that and the final two days of this epic adventure to Israel and Egypt coming up next time. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and ring the bell to get notified. You bet. And until next time, Russell's friends, you take care. Bye.